watercolour is a beautiful medium to use. It's effortless, it's quick, and it will often paint itself if you let it do what it wants to do. I painted this kookaburra this week, and I want to show you a few different areas where I let the paint do its own thing, and a few areas where I reined it in and I made it behave. If you've painted with watercolour, you'll know that it has a mind of its own and it will do things that you don't plan for it to do. When I paint, sometimes I'll let it do what it wants to do and other times I'll take charge and I'll make it do what I want it to do. It's not a medium that you want to fuss with too much, otherwise your painting is going to look laboured and overworked, which is what I see when I look at a lot of my earlier paintings. I tended to try too hard to get everything the way I wanted it. So now when I paint, I try and balance what I do with it. On some areas of the painting, I'll let the paint do its own thing. And on other areas, like I said, I'll try to make it behave. Hopefully doing that will give me a painting that has just enough detail to keep the eye interested, but plenty of other areas where the eye can go to and relax. When I decided to paint this kookaburra, I realised there's not a lot that I want to do with the white feathers on the front, but they take up a big part of the painting, so I want to try and make that area interesting if I can. I knew that the wash that I put on those feathers needed to be alive and fresh, not laboured. So before I started to paint it, I had a good look at the reference photo and I worked out how I was going to paint it. Here is the photo that I took of the kookaburra. He had just landed on our clothesline. I like this photo because of the lighting and I also liked the way his tail was still up in the air after landing. I didn't want to paint him on the clothesline so I had another photo where I could use one of our fence posts to put him on. I've got the kookaburra drawn onto my watercolour paper I've cut a full sheet of Fabriano Artistico cold pressed paper into quarters and I've stretched the paper and it's attached to some gator board. Okay, so now I want to have a look at this kookaburra and I'm going to focus my attention on the white feathers on the front. Looking at them, I see that the lightest part of the bird are these feathers that run down the side here. So I will leave white paper showing there but even though the feathers on the front are white, I still need to get some colour on them so that I can leave those feathers down the side there with white paper showing. So I have to decide what colours to choose. I have to look closely at my photo. What colours can I see in those white feathers? I'm thinking the overall main colour I'll use will be grey, but grey can be a bit bland so I want to try and liven it up a little. I can see some yellow right here in the front and also an area of yellow just here. I can also see a pale purple colour here. So I want to include those colours on my painting. That will make it more visually interesting and it will also make it more interesting for me to paint. The easiest way for me to paint those white feathers on the front is to paint them wet on wet. That way the colours will flow into one another and I'll get those lovely soft transitions from one colour to another. With this first wash, the pressure is on because the first wash is always the cleanest and the purest. And I want to get it right, particularly on those white feathers. I don't want to have to come back in later with a second layer of paint if I can help it. I want to do that wash once and I want to leave it alone if I can. I've talked about the importance of these first washes before in this video, so have a look at that if you haven't already. Okay, so now I'm going to mix up some grey paint. I'll work wet on wet and while that grey paint's wet, I'll drop in the yellow and the violet that I see in the grey areas. I've got some burnt sienna and some French ultramarine on my palette here. I'm going to mix them together to create some grey paint. 
You can use any complementary colours to mix a grey. I like these two colours mixed together and I use them often. They've been on my palette for a while so I've got to soften them with some water. I'm thinking to myself that I might use Naples yellow as my yellow that I see. I don't want anything too bright so I think this will be okay. Just clean up that blue that I've got there. So some Naples yellow, this is Windsor and Newton paint that I'm using. And I'll use my Windsor Violet that I use often as the violet or purple that I see in the grey feathers. This colour here will be my main colour that I use. I'll use my big Da Vinci mop brush to get the water on. This is a series 418 and it's a number 4. So I'll paint water all over the front of the bird but I won't put it on the white patch of feathers on the right hand side. So I've wet all that front area of feathers except on the right hand side there. I bought some new brushes for myself that I want to try out. This is a Rosemary & Co round brush series 8 and this is a number 7. I'll use this one to put the grey paint on. I like my round brushes to have a fine point on them that's why I chose these series 8 brushes. They seem to have a finer point than the others. So I like them with the point so that I can get right up on the tip and get some fine lines with them. I'm pulling the paint here out onto the dry paper to get those spiky edges. Just up the top here I want to soften away this paint edge. I'm not ready to paint the head yet but I don't necessarily want a hard paint line there so I'm just softening that edge with my damp brush so that I can come back and work on it later. I want to focus on this chest area first before I start thinking about the head. As I paint I'm thinking I don't want this colour to be too dark because these are white feathers that I'm painting but I don't want to have to come back and put another layer of paint on here either. I want to get it right the first time so there's a lot of things going on in my mind as I paint this first wash on. Now I'm quite happy for there to be white paper showing in the grey area. I'm also happy for it to go on patchy. I don't necessarily want a flat even wash on this area like I would if I was painting a sky or something like that. Alright so now I'm ready to put the yellow on there. So I drop that onto the wet paper, it blends with the grey. I don't want to fuss with it too much because I don't want to make a completely new colour. I want to see the yellow and I want to see the grey. I'll take some more grey up underneath the beak here. I've taken the grey up there further as well. And I keep going up around the head. I'm painting this area here on dry paper because it's smaller I can paint it quicker. I'll get some Windsor Violet now and I'll drop that on. Everything's still damp. I'll get a bit more paint. So I'm hoping that's going to dry really nicely and I'll be happy with it and I won't have to fuss with it anymore. There it is, it's dried and I'm quite happy with that. I don't do anything else to it other than put a small amount of Windsor Violet down the left hand side later on. 
So that's ready for me now to start adding the detail and the brown feathers. So the first thing I did was I painted the eye in with some sepia. I always take my time when I paint birds' eyes and birds' beaks because I don't want to get them wrong. It's important to get the size and the shape of them right. I decided to paint over the pupil. I can put that in later. At the moment I'm just making sure that the shape of it is right. While I waited for the eye to dry, I painted in those brown feathers on the side. Coming back to the eye now, I'm wetting it with water. I want to darken the outer edge. I've got some more sepia on my brush now, but this time I've got darker pigment, so I've wiped my brush over the pigment itself. I'm painting that onto the outer edge on the wet paper. I wanted the eye to be wet so that the paint would bleed in from the outer edge. I didn't want there to be a hard, sharp line around the outside edge of the eye. So I wanted the darkness on the outer edge, but I wanted it to bleed in towards the pupil. So now that it's on there, I can take my damp brush and move that paint where I want it. I can take some paint off if I need to. I can wipe it on a cloth and I can spread it around and push it where I want it. So I don't have any paint on my brush at the moment. It's just damp with water and I'm moving that paint around. So I've got that darker rim around the outside edge but it's not a hard, sharp line. It's more of a soft transition between the darker brown and the lighter brown. I dried it off and now I can paint the pupil in with some lamp black. When I paint smaller birds on smaller pieces of paper, I will often use a waterproof black pen to paint the pupil in. This is fairly large so I can paint it in but if I get the shape of it wrong with the brush I can always use the pen to tidy it up and make it look more round. When I paint the feathers on the front of the head I paint them on the wet paper as well. That gives me those soft fuzzy edges. I paint a layer of burnt umber first and then I put sepia over the top. This is sepia on my brush now. I've painted some more of those brown feathers and I've even put the tail feather in there. Now I want to put a feather here on the front. So I'm drawing one in with my pencil. And I'll use my brush to wet behind it. This is one way that I like to paint feathers and I've demonstrated this in another video here on YouTube. So I'm painting negatively, I'm not actually painting the feather itself, I'm painting the area around the feather. So this is violet, the Windsor violet that I used earlier. So I paint around the outer edge of the feather and that forms the shape of the feather. Then I just push that paint away so that it's not a hard edge forming there blend it away and that gives me a little feather there, a little jagged feather. I'm going to put a little bit of paint on the front of the feather just to tone it down so that it's not so light. Just here I'll put some colour, not very much. Here I want to do the same thing, I want to create an edge where the neck feathers join up to the body feathers but I only want it to be soft and subtle I don't want a sharp hard line here so I've put the water there now I'm running the violet along there and I'll flick some of that violet up onto the dry feathers here I've got some grey paint that I used earlier So once I've got the line the way I want it, then I push some of that paint up. So here, that 
creates the feather separations there and makes them look like little neck feathers. Coming back to the eye, I want to darken the front half of it. I'll use sepia again and I'll wash that over the front of the eye. So the front of the eye will be darker than the back half of the eye. Now I need to push that paint over the top of the entire pupil as well, otherwise I'll get a line through the middle. So just here I need to spread the paint out. Down here on the post that the kookaburra is standing on, I can let the watercolour do what it wants to do pretty much. I'll work on wet paper here as well. I've masked off the wire. I've put some masking fluid over the top of that so I won't disturb that. And I'll work wet on wet here as well. Rather than introduce new colours onto the post, I'll continue to use the colours that I've been using on the kookaburra. So this is the grey that I used for the white feathers. I might have a bit more burnt sienna mixed into it because it's slightly different. I'll paint that top edge in first. And then I can start to put the paint over the rest of it. Here's where I let the watercolour paint do what it wants to do. All I do is put it on the paper and keep my fingers crossed. I've got the grey on there now, so what I'll do now is drop in some burnt umber. I used burnt umber on the wings as well. That will create some warmth there, and some interest. This darker brown is sepia and I also use that on the kookaburra. So I try to resist the urge of fussing with the paint too much. I put it on and I hope that it will look okay once it's dried. I can work on it once it is dry, but I want this first wash to be fairly simple. The paint has started to dry, it's not completely dry, it's still damp, but now I can drop some water on it to create some watercolour blooms that disturbs the pigment and it helps to create some texture. That first layer has dried, so now I can re-wet it and work over the top of it. I don't want to do too much work on it because I don't want to lose that first wash that I've got there, but I want to add a little bit more detail to it now. I'm working on the wet paper because I want the paint edges to be soft. I don't want hard, sharp lines just yet. I want to keep it fairly loose to begin with. And then right at the end, if I think I need a bit more detail, I can paint on the dry paper. I'm creating some directional lines or some cracks in the wood. So this is sepia that I'm using. Another reason I like to work on the damp paper is because if I make a mark that I don't like, I can take my damp brush and remove it. As long as I'm not using a staining colour I should be right. I've got really dark pigment here so I've wiped my brush over the pigment itself to get it this dark. When I do that too the paint is thicker and the pigment tends to stay where I put it. Here I've got some burnt umber and I'm dropping that on while it's wet. I keep going with it and I try and put most of the detail where the bird is sitting. Here I'm using my pencil just to add a little bit more detail with the graphite. So there he is, I put some wire down the bottom as well. The full length version of this tutorial will be on my Patreon site as soon as I finish editing it. I never find painting in watercolour easy. so. If you ever feel afraid of that blank sheet of white paper in front of you, know that you're not alone. I feel the fear too, but I tell myself it's just a piece of paper. It's an expensive piece of paper, but it's just a piece of paper. And if the painting doesn't go the way I want it to, 
and it's underwhelming when it's finished, then it's a learning piece and I'll try to do better next time. I remind myself it's not about the destination, it's a journey. It's the process of painting that gives me the most satisfaction and the most pleasure. So have fun while you paint. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and be sure to subscribe and leave me a comment because it's all of you who keep me motivated to keep making these videos. I'll see you soon. I want to do that easiest way for me to paint those white feathers on the front is to paint them wet on wet that way the colors will flow into one, one another the easiest way for me to paint those white feathers on the front is to paint them wet on wet that way effortless it's quick and it will often paint itself if you let, let it I tended to try to get everything the way I wanted it so then <sighs> couldn't get that out try again because I feel the fear too I tell myself it's just a piece of The easiest way for me to paint those white feathers on the front is to paint them. Start again. The easiest way for me to paint those feathers on the The easiest way for me to paint those feathers on the front.